and yes, we're live. Okay, <laughs> trying to get it set up. Hi, welcome to my broadcast. This is episode number nine seventy six. Topic today is um, a very interesting one, and it is about half time on the Super Bowl. So hopefully you got a chance to watch this instead of watching Shakira and uh, um, Very Low. <laughs> so, question to topic today is basically is when is being single better than being in a relationship? And I'll give you a few reasons in a moment. Um, just want to say that. Um, no, I'm going to say that. That's not going to work. I'm going to, sp- <laughs> I'm going to be polite. I was going to, ju- <laughs> I was going to jump into stuff. I won't. So first of all, um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I'll tell you at the back end where you find the replays. I talk about love and relationships every day. And this one's going to be a doozy, perhaps. We'll see what happens. I don't have any script. But I was talking to a friend of mine on the way home today from Agape, and it came up about why being single is a good thing. And so I wanted to talk about when being single is better than being in a relationship, because there's many times when it is. There's also times when it isn't, but I'm going to talk about the times that it is, just so you can think about it, because maybe you're thinking, well, let me, back, let me preface. Maybe you're thinking that being single sucks. Maybe you're, thinking, maybe you're thinking that being single is the worst thing because you're not in a relationship and there's nobody to love and you're on your own and that sort of stuff. And I understand that you feel that way. But I'm going to give you some things, that, reasons to think that maybe being single is a good idea, not against being in a relationship, but actually maybe additive to being in a relationship. Interested? Okay, let's dive in. So... The first thing we we'll talk about is that for many people, being outside a relationship somehow is like they're lacking an arm or something. They're missing something vital. And I want to disavow you of that notion right off the top. Because if you're thinking that way, you're more than likely not thinking of yourself, one, as okay as you are. Secondly, as whole and complete without somebody else. Because most, of it, most people seem to carry an idea for myself. I believe for many, many years that I wasn't whole and I wasn't complete until I had somebody in my life. And as I've quoted from Jerry Maguire many times, the quote that he would say to her was, you complete me. That fallacy, that lie, that absolutely heinous statement is propagated through many relationships, dating sites, movies, love songs, forever. And frankly, it's embarrassing because it's so not true. Nobody complete can complete anybody else. If you think you can complete somebody else, or you think that somebody else can complete you, you're living under a false presumption. Because none of us are incomplete. Now that sounds so simplistic, I know. But I want to drop this in a way that I can start unpacking it so you can make some sense. Because being single, for some time, actually is the best place to be. Because when you're alone, when you're single, yes, when you're alone, oh my God, the dreaded alone versus lonely. That's the only thing I, I've talked about that before. may not cover it this time. But being alone is a good time to work on your stuff. When you're not in a relationship, there's actually a lot more freedom in some ways, although although when you do a relationship right, you can have freedom as well. But I want to speak to the single side of freedom because they're a little different from being in a relationship. Because when you're single, there's nobody to be accountable to except yourself. The thing that people do when they're a single sometimes is think they don't have to be worried about anything. They don't care about anything because there's nobody to report to except their future partner, which is inaccurate because really we are always accountable to ourselves. But we forget that because we think somehow that it's okay not to um, take care of ourselves. It's okay not to exercise regularly. It's okay not to study and grow and learn and be better than we were before. All these things we justify because we're not with anybody is really sad. Because what we're doing is we're denying our own self-support, our own self-value, our own self-love. And frankly, that's a mistaken approach. When you're single, it's actually the best time to focus on all those things that make you better. Not only because it makes you more attractive for a future relationship, hint, hint, but also it makes you happier about your own life. Because when you love yourself and you take care of yourself and you respect yourself by by studying, by growing, by working out, by eating right, by doing all those different things, you start to really appreciate who you are. Which means a few things. One of which is, makes you more attractive, as I mentioned. But secondly, makes you clear that you're not going to settle for a relationship that doesn't match that. One of the best things you can have going for you when you take care of yourself and elevate your own self-respect, your own self-reflection, your own, your own belief systems. When you do that, you choose better quality relationships. I talked over the last few days about the paradigm, the trap of falling into of um, not having, I can say this, what I want to say, it, about the question about how you love, like what lens you look through. Well, this is another piece of the puzzle, which basically is what is your self-evaluation like so that the quality of relationship you seek matches that. Because for many of us, and I'm speaking inclusively of myself, <laughs> because I've done this over the years, is we believe somehow that we're not worthy of what we think we can have. 
like what we think we can have is so far above what we can have, we want really believe we can have, we never go for it. We'll say, well, I can't have that because she's too this or he's too that or whatever that is. Recognizing the fact that it's all an internal um, game we're running. You can have what you want. There's a moment you believe you can have it. That's true in every area of life, not just relationship. That's about goals, careers, money, cars, everything. That was a short list, I know. But, <laughs> but the idea is that you can have everything you want when you believe you can have it. But if you don't believe you can have it, you'll never have that. It really comes down to your own self-belief, self-reliance, self-support, self-love, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the understanding of being single and how being single is better than being in a relationship at certain times is when you have clarity about where you want to focus on and grow into. Maybe it's a business you want to start. And it's better to focus purely on that 100% versus it's having a relationship as well that can juggle that. Now, the flip side of that, by the way, is you can focus on the goal you want to start a new business or whatever it is you're launching and have your partner support you as well. So it works for or against depending how you do it. And ideally, if you do build something, the relationship you have or the relationship you're going to have will honor and support that as well. That's a thing to put in your list of what you must have in a relationship if you believe that too. The second piece, though, is the understanding that the relationship you have with yourself becomes a projection into the world around you. Meaning that the way you view yourself is how other people will see you as well. So the more you understand your value and respect of who you are, and I don't mean this as an ego point of view, but a self respect, self evaluation, self honoring place, then other people start seeing you the same way. Because if they don't see you that way, you won't notice. <laughs> That's one of the benefits, by the way. So understanding how it's important to be intentionally alone to work on stuff, and there's another piece I want to give you, by the way, is a good time to be away from relationship, to work on that. The other piece I was going to say, which was sitting on the edge, is when you're single, is a great time to work on your past issues from relationships. Don't be the sort of person who gives your next partner the job of being your therapist. Don't do that, please. Not a good idea. Do the work on your own. Excuse me. Do the work when you're single with someone who can guide you, like myself. If you've got issues about past relationships that you don't want to carry the baggage and dump it on your future partner, which is not a very nice thing to do, then get some help. Whether it's with a therapist, counselor, coach, guide, facilitator, whatever that is, someone like myself, or somebody else, that is absolutely a healthier choice. So being single and working on past stuff, working on your future stuff, working on your vision, your goals, your intentions, which may include relationship, is a good thing to do when you're single. Now, when you're in a relationship, a lot of those things still play out, but it helps to start from a much higher level of playing field, so to speak. When you, learn, when you live, in, live in a place where you honor and respect who you are, a relationship should be adding to that, filling yourself up above, making yourself better, enjoying your life, having more joy, more celebration, more, life, more love in your life. But it starts with you. Every relationship I talk about with my clients and every, every relationship I've seen, it has to start with yourself. If you live in a relationship for the other person, you're doomed to fail. Yes, you're doomed to fail. When you love yourself fully first, then you recommend, sorry, you respect yourself to be in a relationship with somebody who then respects you as well. It really is this mirror experience with relationship. The more you take care of yourself, the more your partner will take care of you. The more you love yourself, the more your partner can love you. And the more you love yourself, the more you can love them. The more you take care of yourself, the more you can take care of them as well. It's all a wonderful little multifaceted mirror system, so to speak. But you've got to choose it. And when you're single, it's a good time to get clear because when you're single, it's the easiest time to focus on what you want to create because you're not in the relationship already. Little, little, little PS. If you're in a relationship and you want to grow and your partner wants to grow too, then this is a great time to play. But sometimes people discover that they're growing when the partner isn't. I did a whole talk about this before and it's in my book. One of the chapters in my book talks about rubber band relationships. Not rebounding, but pressure and tension in relationships. But I'm not going to talk about that here. Sorry, I have to look at the other broadcast for that one. But I want to give you the, the um, opportunity to consider for yourself if you're single, what is you really want? When you know what you really want, it gets easier to choose it and to have it. Especially when you start valuing yourself enough to deserve what you want. It's all woven together. So I'm going to put some links in the comments because I know they will help you. One of which is um, my self-love meditation. That will be in the comments for certain. Also, I'm going to put in the comments my BFF Masterclass. I do, I mean, yeah. Sorry, I just had a thought. I was talking about something else this morning about marketing. <laughs> Don't put too many choices. I'm going to put two things in the comments just for that purpose. So one of which is my self-love meditation because it's an easy, easy access point to start from to start valuing yourself when you're single, especially. I'm also going to put in there my BFF Masterclass invitation because it is a transformational 90-day journey that you'll be playing with me on. 
So those will be in the comments for you to check out. The questions I asked, the things I proposed or suggested for you, I invite you to look at for yourself. Are you in fact willing to own your singledom as a conscious, intentional, um, enjoyable experience? If you are, you're in the right place. If you're not, you may be choosing relationship from the wrong place. So I hope this makes some sense to you. This is my, this is my, this adds to the previous broadcast, by the way. I do invite you to watch my previous broadcast the last two or three days because they all tie together in interesting ways. But I do invite you to look at your own choices you're making and what you want to have and how you want to get there. If you want to get some help, reach out to me. Message me over social media. Put any questions, comments in the comments below and I'll respond and I'll sign off. And check out the links I'm going to put in the comments. They will help you. Guaranteed. So, first of all, thank you for watching my broadcast if you have just joined me. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day, at, um, every day, seven days a week on my Facebook page, my personal Facebook page, which is Barry Selby, um, usually at 5 p.m. Pacific time, doing it today at 5 p.m. Pacific time because it's right in the middle of half time for the uh, end of the Super Bowl, just because that's today. Happy Super Bowl, if that's what you're watching. My invitation to you is to check out the links, to take a, take a look at my broadcast. And if, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, by the way, I do have replays. Let me shortcut to that. Um, my broadcast, I put on my business page on Facebook as replays. You can watch them anytime you want which is Barry Selby, the author. Please like, subscribe, please like my page on Facebook, Barry Selby, the author. Um, there's about 200 broadcasts there, not many, or not all of them, but certainly some of them. But you can catch about 200 of those there. If you want to watch all of them, you need to go to my YouTube channel. So if you go to youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby, you can watch all the broadcasts there. Actually, you've got to subscribe to my channel first. Subscribe, please. And there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine where all these broadcasts live. Every one of the 970 plus broadcasts you can watch Anytime you want, search for titles, watch what you want, and get some help. I think they'll give you something to work on. Check the links in the comments, again. Um, check the broadcast I put out for the last few days. They will help you as well. And uh, that's about it. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, probably. Same channel. And as always, please, take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow.